Hey everyone, I'm Caroline, the manager of live events at PETA. I'm going to share with you a few helpful tips on being an effective advocate for animals at tabling events, protests, and other outreach events. Here's what we'll cover. Preparing for an outreach event, the best way to reach your audience, effective advocacy, and tabling etiquette. Let's get into it. Preparing for an outreach event. First, figure out which animal rights issue your campaign will focus on. Will you be raising awareness of the abuse that cows endure for dairy and demanding that Starbucks end its vegan surcharge? Will you be outside an urban outfitter store speaking up for sheep who suffer in wool production? Talking points for any SOS campaign will be provided by an SOS staffer. You can also browse PETA.org for fact sheets about any and every animal rights issue. Study and practice using your talking points. You'll be having conversations about your topic, so get comfortable with the material. Find a way of delivering the facts that feels natural. You don't want to come off sounding like a robot, so personalize your delivery and describe things in your own way. It's helpful to practice out loud and experiment to find what works best for you. Use the talking points that stand out to you. If you find one fact or talking point particularly compelling, use that one the most. You'll deliver it more passionately. Make sure you have a good, concise, and confident answer to the question, what are you doing out here? And another to, how can I help these animals? Never lie or exaggerate. Even if you know your stuff, you're bound to encounter a question that you don't know the answer to, and that's okay. It's always better to admit that you don't know something than to say something that isn't true, which would damage your credibility. So when people ask you questions you don't know the answer to, offer to find out for them and to take down their contact info so that you can provide them with answers or resources later. The best way to reach your audience. Now that you're familiar with the facts pertinent to your campaign, let's focus on the logistics of the event. Will you be at a school, in front of a business, at a concert? Tailor your outreach approach to your environment and to your target audience. Dress the part. Clothing that's appropriate to wear on a college campus or at a music festival might not be appropriate to wear in front of a corporate office, for example. When doing outreach in a more professional setting, we want to make sure that we look sharp and aren't wearing clothing that will distract from our message. Alternatively, you might look out of place if you're dressed in business casual at a campus sporting event or at a social media convention. If you're protesting with your SOS hub, make sure everyone is wearing the SOS t-shirts and bandanas that we sent you. You want your audience to relate to you, so find common ground. For example, if you're protesting outside a store and trying to reach its customers, let people know that you were once a customer too before you learned about the company's cruel practices. Or if you're setting up a table at a concert, get familiar with the artists playing the show. Are any of them sympathetic to animal rights? Are they vegan? Do they post about their rescued dog on TikTok? A great way to kick off a conversation with a fan is to ask, who are you excited to see tonight? Every time you do outreach, you'll meet people who have never met an activist, someone from SOS or PETA, or even a vegan before. This means that your attitude can help determine what they think of SOS, PETA, and even the animal rights movement as a whole. So be kind and present yourself as the upbeat, positive, and committed activist that you are. Begin every interaction with the expectation that it will go well. When you start a conversation, act as though you're talking to an old friend that you haven't seen in a while. Try and talk to every person that you see. You might be surprised to find out who is receptive to your message. Make sure everyone leaves with a sticker, a leaflet, and an action step to help animals. Effective advocacy. Most people truly have no idea what animals endure in laboratories, on factory farms, and in the clothing and entertainment industries. So paint a picture with your words, being specific about the practices that cause animals to suffer. Don't just tell folks that the conditions that animals are forced to live in are awful. Describe them in detail so that people can draw their own conclusions. For example, instead of saying chickens are abused, you could say chickens are scalded to death in defeathering tanks and their throats are slit while they're still alive and fully conscious. Their wings and bones are broken when they're punched, kicked, stomped on, and thrown against the wall. Instead of saying something like the wool industry hurts sheep, try saying sheep are punched in the face, stomped on, and beaten with electric clippers. They're left with bloody open wounds that workers crudely stitch closed without providing any pain relief. Some sheep even die from the abuse. Stay focused on your topic and goals. Don't let anyone derail the conversation. With some practice, you can bring just about any tangent back to your campaign and back to your action step. Let's say you're campaigning to get vegan options added to your school's dining hall and someone asks, well, what are you doing about the wild animals who are killed for your vegan crops? You could say something like, that's awesome that you care about saving animals' lives. The best thing you can do to help save animals is to go vegan. Here are some free recipes and resources. 
Remember to keep your cool. We want to have discussions with people, but we don't want to argue. Rather than getting into a heated debate with someone, just plant a seed, hand that person some literature, and move on. If someone strikes a nerve, it might be tempting to react with anger, but that's definitely not in the animal's best interests. Always respond with patience and respect. People who say something nasty are often on the verge of changing their habits. They may feel upset because they're dealing with their own cognitive dissonance. People aren't usually trying to stir things up with their questions. Again, most people genuinely have no idea how animals suffer. So even if you've heard a question like, where do you get your protein, a thousand times, keep in mind that it might be the first time someone has ever asked that question. Your response can make all the difference. Tabling etiquette. When you're setting up a table to recruit members for your SOS hub or to inform other students at your school about a campaign, keep it clean. A professional looking table or booth helps ensure that everyone who passes by will be able to identify the issue and be inspired to check it out. Keep the table well stocked and organized. All information should be clearly presented and easy to obtain. Personal items like food, drinks, and phones should definitely not be kept on the table. Lay out your table with the important literature in the front and fun freebies in the back. Be accessible and inviting. Stand in front of the table, not behind it, unless you're swamped with people, in which case you can stand behind the table to make it easier to keep track of the people you're talking to, make sure everyone gets freebies, and keep the table stocked. Don't sit, text, make phone calls, scroll through social media feeds, eat, or leave the table unattended. Smile, be friendly, and look people in the eye. Politely call folks over to you. There is one exception to the no phone rule, and that's using it to take photos and videos. Take photos of protesters and their signs, passersby and their reactions, and activists passing out freebies. This will make for exciting content to share on social media and to inspire even more people to get active. Literature is another important element of tabling. Hand everyone, and I mean everyone, literature, like stickers and leaflets. Even, and even maybe especially, those who seem to disagree with your campaign. Near the end of your event, gather any remaining materials into easy to grab packets and hand them out before you clean up and go. Storing literature in boxes under your bed won't help animals, so make sure you don't have any materials left over. We can always send you more for the next event. An exit point at the venue is a great place to do your end of day leafleting. As you pass your materials out, you can say things like, thanks for coming out, get home safe, and save animals. Rather than waiting for people to take your leaflets from you, put them right into people's hands. And finally, it's literature, not litter a -ture. Always clean up any of your materials that you see on the floor. People are much less likely to litter if they don't see any litter on the ground. And we never want to make a bad impression at a venue by leaving a mess. So there you have it. I hope you find these tips helpful for successful and wide-ranging outreach for animals. If you have any questions, you can contact the SOS team anytime. We can't wait to see the work that you do.